The first thing we're going to start with is working with time. The first aspect of this that we kind of need to clarify is what latitude and longitude are. So you have probably done working with time at some point. It may have been a while. There are two terms that kind of come at the start of this unit, latitude and longitude. Latitude measures the angular difference between these great circles up here and here. And it essentially is the lines that run like the belt around the world. Longitude measures the angular distance between this east and west line and the back east and west line you can imagine is back there. So it's going this way. One way you can remember it is lat is flat. So lat is running flat across. And then long is long like a long spaghetti noodle. All right. So we're going to work out how latitude and longitude um, or longitude more specifically helps us find time differences. There are 360 degrees on Earth. Remember, it's a circle, right? A sphere. So there are 360 degrees. One degree is equal to four minutes. So 15 degrees right? 15 times four is equal to one hour. We also know the radius of the earth. So this is that line is 6,400 kilometers. So if you're asked to find the time in a location, which is east, so this way you would be adding. And if you're asked to find something that's this way, you're subtracting. Think of it as like Australia, which is going to look a little something like this, right? Never forget Tasmania is here, right? And this is ahead of, let's say, we'll draw Africa. So this is ahead of this, South Africa, or it's ahead of Egypt or whatever we're going to say. All right, we've got a couple questions here. Find the time difference between Sydney and Paris. So, you know, Sydney is 151 degrees east and Paris is two degrees east. The first thing we need to do is find the difference between these two east measurements. Now, time is not affected by north or south, right? We, Sydney, are in the same time zone as, um, hang on, let me confirm this on my map before I lie to you. So if you draw an upward line from Sydney, right, there are parts of um, Indonesia that are in the same time zone, or there are parts of the very east of Russia that are in the same time zone, even though they're way more north than us. So we're in the same time zone as those sections. However, we're not in the same time zone as South Australia. So you only need to look at the difference between the east and west. The difference is 149. Remember, four degrees is one minute. So we're going to divide, um, one, or we're going to times 149 by four to get the number of minutes. Um, or sorry, one minute, one degree is four minutes. Swap that around like this. So there are 596 minutes. And then we're going to divide that by 60 and then convert minutes to hours. So there are nine, um, five, six in your calculator, which is 10 hours. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. You would go 596 divided by 60 and you would get like nine something. And then you click this little bubble button and it goes nine hours and 56 minutes. So that's 10 hours roughly. If it is 5 p.m. in Sydney, what time is it in Paris? So remember the location is east, we add, west, we minus. So Paris is behind Sydney. So you kind of want to visualize it. The way I do it is like I actually draw a little like map in my head. So again, it's a very dodgy drawing of Australia. This is Sydney. And then we've got Paris right up here in France. And like this is the UK and this is, um, we've got like Spain to the side, right? So this is, this is all Europe up here. This is where we are. This is 10 hours behind. So you can kind of put them on like a little line, right? Paris, two degrees east, Sydney, 151 degrees east. We minus 10 hours from 5 p.m., which is going to give us 7 a.m. So you can kind of, I like to do it in my head or you can do it on a calculator, but you have to change it to 24 hour time. I just kind of like to count backwards. You can also just minus 12 hours and then add two back to it. 
Okay, this is from the 2014 HSC General 2 paper. Singapore is located at 1 North 104 East and Sydney is located at 34 South 151 East. What is the time difference between Singapore and Sydney? Okay, so we have 151 minus 104. 151 minus 104 gives us 47. We're going to times that by four to get the number of minutes, which is 188. And then we're going to divide that by 60 to get the number of hours. Divided by 60, we get 3.13, which if I click my bubble button is three hours and eight minutes. Let's check our answer. Three hours essentially. All right, let's do this 2016 HSC General 2 question. Melbourne is located at 38 degrees south, 145 degrees east. Dubai is located at 24 degrees north, 55 degrees east. What is the difference in longitude between Melbourne and Dubai? So longitude, again, is these numbers, east and east. So we've got our um, 145 minus 55. 145 minus 55 is 90. So our difference in longitude is 90 degrees. The time difference is six hours. So we're going to do 90 times four, which is 360. And if we divide 360 by 60, we get six hours. Now this is where the questions get a bit more complicated and this is kind of what you're actually on the lookout for in your HSC. Um, okay. A plane leaves Melbourne on Friday at 11.30 p.m. The flight time to Dubai is 15 hours. What will the time and day in Dubai be when the plane is due to land? So it leaves Melbourne on Friday at 11.30 and it lands 15 hours later. So the way I like to imagine it is that there is a friend waiting in Melbourne who will call me when I land in Dubai. Now I wanna figure out what time it is for them in Melbourne when I land in Dubai. So I'm over here in Melbourne, Dubai is over here. It's 11.30 and my friend's flight takes off or their f my flight takes off, right? I get to Dubai 15 hours later. I want to call my friend in Melbourne 15 hours later. It's like, hey, I landed. What's 15 hours after 11.30 p.m.? It would be, so if it was from midnight, 15 hours would be 3 p.m. the next day, but we have to subtract half an hour. So it's 2.30 p.m. on Saturday in Melbourne when I land. But Dubai is six hours behind. So to check the time that it would be in Dubai, I sub subtract six hours. It would be 8.30 a.m. in Dubai when I land. Okay, here's another example. Island A and Island B are both on the equator. Island B is west of Island A. The longitude of Island A is five degrees east and the angle at the center of the earth O between A and B is 30. So you can see that it's kind of drawn out this little like, um, I guess like triangle or um, trigonometry problem for us there, right? So the question for question A, what is the latitude and longitude of Island B? So we know that this is O, it's just on the equator and it's five degrees east. But then we have a 30 degree difference. So we want to do five degrees minus that. So if we're moving west, it's actually going to be from 180 degrees west counting down. Or actually, no, it'll be counting up west. Sorry, my mistake. So it's going to be adding 30 degrees. So it would be 25 degrees west, but it's also on the equator. So it's going to be zero degrees. What time is it on island B when it is 10 a.m. on island A? Well, remember there's a 30 degree difference. One degree is four minutes. So that's um, 120 minutes, which is going to be two hours. Two hours behind island A is going to be 8 a.m. All right, I am flying from Adelaide, which is 35 degrees south, 139 degrees east, to Amsterdam, 52 degrees north, 5 degrees east, to see my family. If my 25-hour flight leaves at 6 a.m. on Wednesday, 25 hours sounds like hell, what time will it be when we land in Amsterdam? Okay, let's find our difference. 139 minus, one, uh, minus 5. 139 minus 5 
is going to be four. Hold on. Wait, no, 139 minus, sorry, yeah, 134, not four. 134. Now there are four minutes per degree, which means there are 536 minutes. Divide that by 60. There are 8.93 hours, which is actually eight hours and 56 minutes. So we'll say nine hours. Close enough. All right. If I leave 6 a.m. on Wednesday, what time will it be when my plane arrives in Amsterdam? Well, 25 hours later is going to be 7 a.m. Um, on Thursday. But in Amsterdam, it's going to be... 7 a.m. on Thursday minus nine hours. So it's actually going to be 10 p.m. on Wednesday night. That's a very shoddy rendition of the word Wednesday. Okay, let's do our last question here for working with time. Karen is in Athens, which is two hours ahead of universal coordinated time. Marco is in New York, which is five hours behind. Karen is going to bring Marco at 10 p.m. on Tuesday, Athens time. So what time and day will Marco be picking it up? So Karen is two hours ahead of UTC. Marco is five hours behind. So there is a seven hour difference. So seven hours before 10 p.m. is going to be 3 p.m. on Tuesday in New York. Marco is going to fly home from New York to Athens. His flight will leave on Wednesday, 9 a.m. and will take 11 hours. What time and day will he arrive in Athens? 11 hours later is going to be 8 p.m. in New York. But we also need to add seven hours to that. So seven hours to that is going to be 3 a.m. in Athens on Thursday. Remember, you always want to write the day because if you just wrote 3 a.m., they'd probably be like, oh, you said Wednesday. Always write the day as well. All right, here are my kind of top three tips for acing working with time. All right, questions surrounding those measurements can get really messy and confusing when you've got like different time differences and flights. So take your time, definitely draw diagrams as well. Remember the difference between latitude and longitude. So lat is the first coordinate and it's flat. Longitude is the second, lat is flat. Draw a diagram if you need to. Like I said, scribbling all over the questions. It just kind of helps me realize exactly what I need to figure out. All right, we're going.